At 3,776 meters, Mount Fuji is Japan's highest mountain. And the Japanese have felt a deep affinity with it since ancient times. Its shape is the result of repeated volcanic eruptions, which began around 100,000 years ago. Mount Fuji, a symbol of Japan, is well known worldwide. The appearance of the mountain varies constantly, according to the changing seasons and even the passage of time during the course of a day. The reasons for this are related to Mount Fuji's location and its conical shape, sweeping upward unbroken from the coastal plain. Moisture-laden winds blowing off the ocean hit the side of the mountain and are forced upwards, creating many different shapes of clouds. For example, clouds like this that look like a giant bamboo hat are known as kasagumo, literally bamboo hat clouds. And this phenomenon, which can be seen when the sun comes up from behind the summit of the mountain, is called diamond footy. Against the sunlight, the silhouette of the mountain stands out very clearly. The appearance of Mount Fuji keeps changing, yet it remains awesome and beautiful at all times. Mount Fuji has been an object of worship for centuries. Countless numbers of people have dreamed of climbing it at least once in their lifetime. In the early 19th century, some people unable to make the pilgrimage to the mountain would sometimes create a miniature version of Mount Fuji called Fujizuka, literally Mound Fuji, in an area close to where they lived. These mounds served as substitutes for the real thing. Mount Fuji has also been the subject of many paintings and poems. Katsushike Hokusai, who lived during the late Edo period, created a series of woodblock prints depicting scenes including the mountain in a wide range of compositions. It's called 36 Views of Mount Fuji. This is one of Hokusai's masterpieces, Red Fuji. It's thought that the artist managed to capture a very brief moment when Mount Fuji bathed in the early morning sun glows red. This is another well-known print in the series. Hokusai created a great sense of depth by contrasting the large barrel frame with the tiny peak of Mount Fuji that can be seen through it. From time immemorial, Mount Fuji has been etched into Japanese hearts as an everlasting presence. The beautiful mountain is really like a mother to the Japanese. Stuart? Yes. I'm sure you have many thoughts on Mount Fuji. Yes, indeed. But I think the most important thing is its beautiful conical shape, which rarely fails to impress people seeing it for the first time. And it's great that you can enjoy the seasonal differences in its appearance. I agree. I think it's really a natural artwork. It really is. Stuart, yes. what I think is wonderful about Mount Fuji mm. is that its appearance changes depending on the place from where you see it. Right. Do you have any particular favorite Mount Fuji viewing spot? Well, one of my favorite views is from the western coast of the Mura Peninsula, where I lived for a while. Mount Fuji is around 80 kilometers away from there, so I was amazed one clear winter's night to see the snow-covered mountain gleaming in the moonlight. Uh -huh. mm. Do you have any favorite spots? Well, I have many favorites. Mm. One of them is the bank of the Edogawa River in Shibamata. Oh. What impresses me is that even today we can see Mount Fuji across the metropolis mm. despite old high-rise buildings, mm. which means people in the old days could see it from virtually anywhere in the city. Mm. I suppose Mount Fuji was probably far closer to them than it is to Tokyoites today. Mm. In a way, that's true for foreigners too. In the days before planes, the ships arriving at Yokohama were usually scheduled to arrive in Tsuruga Bay in the early morning, mm. so that if they were lucky, the passengers' first view of Japan would be 
Mount Fuji. Ah, right. Mm. But they often called it uh, Fujiyama, right? <laughs> yes. In fact, when I was a young boy, there was a picture in my encyclopedia of Fujiyama. And uh, that name has long been used in the West. And Japanese restaurants in foreign countries are often named Fujiyama, mm -hmm. even though we call it Fujisan. Well, that kind of different usage of names is really interesting. But whatever it's called, it's always been one of the common symbols of Japan, along with geisha and cherry blossom.